Good morning. It is lovely to see you. Really nice to be here. And it's raining outside again. I'll tell you, it was teeming this morning. And I think after my meditation, when I was resting, I sent a thought to Gaia and I said, Gaia, can you dry it up for me so I can go for a walk? And I rested for quite a long time. And, you know, I actually slept a little um, because I was tired um, after the meditation, not during. Oh, no, I was very engaged and creating and doing stuff there. And when I woke up, the sky was dry. And so I went for my walk and I took those pictures and if you've seen them, you know, there, there's there's low cloud and it was just drifting across and clearing up. Hi, Sing Marie and hello, other beautiful being. I see you jump on my lives and I don't know who you are, but it's lovely to see you each time. Um, and now it's raining again. So I got to walk to the top of the hill and I came back and now it's raining again. But it was dry and I didn't have to put on all my gear and, you know, because it takes time. And when I woke up, finally I was late and I am late. But anyway, I'm here. So I'm just delighted. I feel loved. It's raining again. And it wasn't when I was out there. Today, we have rocks, right? This is actually not a rock. This is just glass. Um, just glass, she says. But it too carries a frequency. And it's here. And it wanted to say hello to you today. Um, and, you know, you can see everything in it. Of course, upside down and fish-eyed. Um... Yeah, but it doesn't it interesting how it distorts everything? Because, of course, you know, we're like this. We see things upside down, inside out. Um, reality is not how we perceive it. <laughs> it so isn't. Um, we have these amazing brains and these amazing senses that plug us into reality. They give us information about what's happening out there. And each one of us has this amazing brain. It takes all that sensory information and makes sense of it according to what we per we have perceived and experienced before. Our brains match patterns. They match this with that and they say, this is like that and this goes with that. And Okay, I understand it now. I've seen orange before, so I know what orange is. This, on the other hand, is blue. Okay, I'm going to show you the other rock before I start raving. Ah, good morning, good morning. And um, this is a slice through... Obviously, a, a, a quartz geode, and it's been dyed. They don't come in this color. Um, and I never would have bought a dyed slice, but this was given to my husband by somebody who worked with us as a, a teacher in a, in a meditation sort of training circle for people who are developing their you know, psychic gifts um, uh, many years ago. And um, he gave it to my husband, and for a long time, nobody else even got to touch it. But... Things changed, energy shifts, and um, here it is. And it really is quite like a portal. It's quite powerful. You can, you know, you sit with meditation, and it's like, oh, this thing is, you know, broadcasting to me. Good morning, Andrew. Good morning, gorgeous people. I don't know who you are, but I recognize many of you. And whether you've been here never before or before, it's just lovely to share with you. So if we catch the light in it, there you are. That looks beautiful. Jordan, it's you. It is beautiful. It's a reflection of our beauty together. Um, and I love the detail. Let's get a little closer. Yeah, it's lovely. It's even, when I look at it, very faintly heart-shaped, okay? Mike, yeah, it is a lovely portal, isn't it? It's just, And I love, the ego. I love catching the light inside it. Um, it is, it was, it was very much a portal stone, is what we used to call it. Um, and you would sit with it and kind of feel, ooh, you know. Now, of course, I carry a lot more energy anyway, um, and I, I, I do things in meditation which is like blasts me out of the, the, the world, um, and crystals and things are beautiful, but what I understand now is that there is so much more energy available to me through connecting with the quantum, the unified field, then I'm ever going to access by sitting with a crystal. And I adore crystals, okay? <laughs> it's just that I have more direct access to the energy that's available to all of us now. But I love sharing crystals because they're beautiful and, you know, and, and, and beauty elevates energy and it gives everybody a chance to come on, an opportunity for me to say, Hi! Hi, Terry! Love and peace indeed. Um, so here I am inside and it's raining. And you have to understand why that's significant. Um, if, you, if you didn't hear the beginning, it's significant and I'm feeling loved. Um, so, 
Today I want to talk really about letting go um, and about how we can't pick and choose what we hold on to. Um, and I mean, this, this is close to my heart because I'm moving into a new life um, and I don't mean I'm moving house or doing anything dramatic. I mean that I'm becoming somebody utterly different in, within. And of course, my life is changing outside. Um, but I observe that a lot of people are seem that a lot of people that I'm close to and or working with are in the same process. It seems to be happening a lot. Jen, good morning, sweetie. Um, and you know, maybe it's because of the time of year, you know, we're coming up to a solstice, midsummer here, midwinter on the other side of the planet. There's the interesting planetary alignments, which I really don't endorse a lot of the stuff that's wrapped around them, but there is a physical, energetic, um, electromagnetic input that we get from the solar system, that we get from the heliosphere, that we get from all the, 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 the stuff that comes from the sun. Um, and I do actually feel that that is having a very palpable effect on the whole of humanity right now. Um, it's, it's making a lot of stuff fly off, fall apart, disappear and, and dissolve into dust. Um, and yeah, the truth is easier to access. But to do that... You have to really be willing to let go of what is not you. Um, and you know, is just as important as your yes. And, you know, you can't, for example, move into a life of feeling loved and whole and abundant and everything else if you are holding on to your pet trauma that you've used to define yourself for however long, you can't hang on to that and move into a new life. Abigail, it's you, honey. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Being able to love yourself, be able to like yourself, be able to enjoy yourself a whole lot more than you, that's such an achievement. It doesn't just happen. We have to let go of our old selves. Eves, it's lovely to see you. Ah, it's like a little reunion every day. Um, so, you know, we can't pick and choose. I'm either all in for who I'm becoming or I'm staying with who I've been. Um, and I know that sounds very polarized. In practice, as I often am talking about, I, you and I, both, all of us, are flip-flopping, Right? I know I want to be, but oh shit, I'm just being that thing that I used to be for however long. Um, it's this constant to and fro in three dimensions, because that's the journey, that is the human experience. Who am I choosing to be in this moment? So when I'm talking about this pol kind of more polarized, I'm either this or I'm that, that is my intention. That is my determination. That is my beacon and my driving internal force that says, you have to let go of this, Maddie, if you want who you're becoming. Oh, I'm so glad, Abigail. Yeah, that's what I'm here to do. And it's interesting when what you're here to do continues not to conform to all the patterns that people put out. You think, no, 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 still no. I don't know what the pattern is and how it's supposed to grow and evolve. I just know that it is. Not even that it will. I just know that it is. And my no is this great compass that says, no, not that way. But follow this breadcrumb. And it's all, you know. But it's interesting that it brings up fear because I want to find a nice little pigeonhole and be in there and know what to do. It's like, no, you're creating something new. Let go. Let go. And I can't hang on to all kinds of aspects of who I've been. Um, and, you know, I have to open my heart. Again, this morning, all of this old... Oh, nothing to do with this lifetime. So much old pain. I can't hang on to that if I'm going to be who I'm becoming. It's not part of that future. And, you know, you have to choose sometimes very deeply to it's not go through this stuff. It is let it go. We get very 
and I'm not really speaking about me, but I know that because I don't, I, I refuse to do this now. But I know that there's this big, you got to go through the pain. you got to dig into it. you got to dive deep. No, I won't. I won't endorse that. I'm interested in becoming. And I'm interested in other people becoming. Putting their attention and their energy, investing themselves in their love and their, you know, the, the, where they, what they make love to in their lives. That's what I'm interested in because that's what we create. Let me read this. Yeah, the puzzles are absolutely the journey. Can you and I trust, feel into that big picture that we can't see? I mentioned it yesterday, you know. It's like we have to, if this is what we're doing, there is a point where you just have to own that there is something bigger than you which is actually partnering with you and this is the piece that I think is really coming home for me at the moment in, in myriad ways Gaia, the universe, I mean it's easy to partner with the universe I know the universe loves me, I really do but the idea of connecting with community oh that's different again, it's nothing to do with having had terrible traumas here it's all other stuff um, so you know, to open my heart to that and to let the old self go that felt so incredibly isolated and I have to do it all on my own. You know, and people arrive and say, oh my God, people are here. There's the team that I was thinking, who the hell's the team? Here's the team. Oh shit, now I've got to open my heart to them. You really think... Maddie, that you can be in this little bubble in yourself and work with these amazing people and not take the risk to open your heart to them. And I discovered that the fear is, wait for it, if I open my heart to someone, they're going to die or they're going to betray me. Isn't that an irrelevant old program? Never happened in this lifetime. Not really, no. No. It's just all old other stuff. And I don't even care where it comes from. And it's so interesting because, you know, that was a deep process that I went through this morning. And, and afterwards, there is a definite change here. It physically feels more open. And I've been aware of a heaviness here. And, I, and it's, there's nothing wrong with my physical heart. There's been tension in the muscles and they get sore and I rub them. But it's like the energy has been informing that tension literally like a shield. Um, and so I'm letting it go. Because if I am to become the fantastically impactful and abundant and therefore more impactful person that I envision and know I'm here to be, I've got to let that go. And it's not particularly easy. But you know, what am I dedicated to, my past or my future? We cannot pick and choose. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm quoting the line from a beautiful man called Miles who stood up on um, the stage at one of Joe Dispenza's uh, advanced workshops and he created a huge shift in his health. He had something that doctors were saying is MS and he just refused to accept it. And, you know, long story, you've got to go and find Miles' testimonial. It's beautiful. And he had some traumatic experience, one actually, traumatic experience when he was young and he made a decision at that time that he was always going to control his life. Because, you know, safety, right? Um, and long story short, the whole thing unraveled and, you know, and, and I mean, he manifested this disease where he lost control of his body, really he lost control of half of it. And he, and he manifested the healing and he had to let it all go. He had to lose control. Now it was benign. It was safe. He had to let all this energy flow through him and all the tears and all the pain and everything had to come out. Um, and then, you know, suddenly I can walk without a cane. I've got a cane for balance now, but I don't need it. And, and I realize that it's not about the cane. It's about me and how I am holding the fact that I'm still using this cane because it suits me rather than, oh, I still need this and there's something still wrong with me. And I'm still healing myself. You know, he had to let it all go. He said, I can't pick and choose what I take into my future. I have to let it all go. And... He's so beautiful, he's so vulnerable in that moment, and, and everybody's completely with him, because they, you know, those spaces are amazing, I'm determined, I'm going to experience that for myself one day. Um, and 
And it's, it's just, it just come to me, you know. I, I can't hang on to the shreds of my past that are so precious to me, I'm not willing... No! If I'm going to become the new person, I'm either all in to become that or I'm not. You can't, you know, there's no middle ground in this regard. There is constant flip-flop. There is constant, who am I going to be? But you really got to know who you're going to be. Um, and if you don't know, that's fine. Remember, that's a process to get to know who you're going to be. And of course, the more you think, well, there's this little piece that I know about who I want to be. And so I'm going to move into that. And as soon as you do that, the stuff that comes up in you, the resistance is, you know, oh, well, this, this is the piece of me that doesn't want to trust people, that doesn't want to feel safe in the world. Hell no, it's dangerous here. Um, God, such a story. And I don't mean in my mind, I mean in my body for so long. Um, and it still fires up really quickly. But I'm aware of it and I just won't continue to endorse that anymore. So, you know, this constant dialogue between past me, future me, who am I choosing to be? And the tools that I have to use, of course to move from one to the other and for me as many of you probably most of you all of you know the only tools that work for me are these beautiful tools that I've learned from Dr. Joe Dispenza who's done the research and explained it all the, the, the science you know of how the brain works and how the body gets stuck in the past and how we program ourselves and therefore how we can uncreate what we have created and that's what I'm doing because it works and you know those of you that, that have taken what I'm learning and sharing and applied it for yourselves, you know perfectly well that it works because you tell me that it does and your lives are changing. And, you know, that's such a blessing for me to, to, to be able to create that with you. Um, walking into the unknown as I do, thinking, how is this going to, you know, the answers are starting to come. So... To move into the life that you desire, just realize the bit that I haven't talked about yet. <laughs> I'm reminded of something that Joe says in, 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 um, in, in, in an interview or in workshops. You know, I've heard him say it a few times. Maybe it's just I've heard the same thing over more than once. So, you know, people always say to me, How, you know, what's the secret to being happy? And he says, stop being unhappy. And you think, what? And of course, that is simple. It's not easy if your brain is conditioned to it and if your body's used to it and then you discover how addicted you are to being unhappy, how, how accustomed and how familiar it is to you to be that way. It's like, you know, and, 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 and if an addiction is something you can't stop, then you're addicted to being unhappy if you can't just choose to feel something else. That's the point. It really is at a, at a biochemical level level we get addicted to our negative emotions we can get addicted to positive ones too it's just because of how we're wired for survival we get addicted to the negative ones so you know to just you mean i can just stop being my old self yeah you can it's just going to take determination to overcome who you're used to being and yes, sometimes smiling when you're down does turn it around why because first you have to make the effort to Paint the smile on your face. And I'll tell you, Andrew, anyone who can do this has my respect because it's never worked for me. I've always had to change my energy first. But if you can find a way to paint the smile on your face and actually generate the feeling that goes with it or put your awareness on something that you are used to smiling about, what are you doing then? You are taking your attention off the thing that you're sad about. You're thinking, I've got to smile. And, you know, it very quickly, by association, your brain says, okay, so I've got to smile, but what am I used to smiling about? What was the last thing I smiled about? And, and what do I feel when I make this expression with my face? And, you know, can I soften my body? Can I relax? They're, they're tools. Fundamentally, every single healing modality, whatever it is, in fact, everything you buy, everything you do, actually is about how it feels when that happens, right? We either avoid things that make us feel bad or we go towards things that make us feel good. And I, I mean, you know, the, the people in your life, the work, the work you do, the everything, it's, it's just, we do it for the feeling. 
And of course we get programmed to think, well, I need that the wonderful job to feel happy and, un- and fulfilled and I need the lover to feel complete and whole and I need to feel enough, have enough money to feel abundant and all of that. And that's, I mean, you know, in three dimensions that's true, but what I am living and what many of you are discovering is that the reverse is actually true. Oh, wow! Finally brave enough to post your own and easy store! Yay! You see, that's change. Mastering yourself, mastering all of the chatter in your head. And many of you relate to this. It says, oh no, nobody would ever pay me for what I do. Nobody would ever like what I do. Nobody would value what I do, never mind me, to make all this effort that I've got to do worth it. But what about, what is that effort? That effort is you moving into the living, breathing, moving beingness of the person who puts stuff in an Etsy store. The, pro- the actual process of going through it, of, you know, summoning up the guts, of, and you feel so naked the first time you put something on, on the online. I remember when my, when my little site went live and it was like, oh, I feel so exposed, and then I realized nobody could find it anyway, and I was looking for it. Um, you know, but it's massive, and you become the person who now has things in an Etsy store, and suddenly it's who you are. That's exactly how it works. Focusing on the art. Oh, yes. You see, you changed your focus. This is exactly how it works. And it took took will, didn't it? It took determination to focus on what you want and what gives you joy and what vibes you up and to stop looking at all of that and listening to and embodying the old stuff that used to stop you. You are no longer that person. Now, I congratulate you and I congratulate everybody who makes that kind of shift. Because that's the magic. And that is mastery. You master that aspect of yourself now. And all you got to do, she says, <laughs> all we got to do is keep on doing that step by step, moment by moment, process by process, for me, meditation, meditation, whatever it is you do, to become more of who you want to be and less of who you were. And put your attention on what you desire. Shift does happen, and this is how. Ah, I'm excited. Thanks for letting us know, Abigail. It's fantastic. Mm, Big love. I'll be back tomorrow with more. Bye-bye.